Oh, yes, indeed. We have a studio friend. Oh, you can see the tail. Oh, so cozy. <laughs> well, good evening, ladies, lasses and lasses. Welcome to the click. We are sitting here cuddling up at the Swedish countryside. The weather is kind of poopy, so we are just cuddling up indoors by a nice, warm, crackling fireplace, reading some glorious r slash freak you Karen memes. And I do hope you are here for it. Mwah. Also, remember that the emotional support demon is still on sale. Yes, indeed, I took it with me to the countryside. I would never leave my support demon behind. Make sure to get your own very quickly today while it's still available. Yes, very good indeed. Let's read some memes, shall we? I demand to speak to the owner of thine castle. Garen, 1496. Look at that ancient, glorious painting. Editor, Hadonka Honka Mahorka Dorkers. YouTube doesn't like them. But this proves our scientific theory once and for all. Karen have been a timeless concept. Oh, how dashing. Military wife Walmart rants. Walmart of Camden has some poor butt taste. <laughs> when you walk into the door, there is a display of Elf on the Shelf for sale, which is a tradition that me and my family do just about every Christmas. Well, my daughter sees the display and starts asking questions. And though the Elf shelves came from the North Pole, I was like, sweetie, sometimes they come from Walmart. <laughs> and then she started asking, while well, Walmart and this kid is just too smart for her own darn good. So I ended up telling her Santa isn't real, and now she's extremely upset and I'm distraught. Thank you, Walmart, for ruining Christmas for my family. <laughs> I went to the customer service department and it basically told me there's nothing they can do. Nothing you can do? <clears throat> and take down the freaking display, you buttholes. It is safe to assume I will not be back at Walmart anytime soon. How dare Walmart disprove the existence of Santa Claus? I mean, if I'm gonna be honest here, fam, kids are pretty gullible, right? You know, it took me until I was like, maybe... 19 to figure out Santa wasn't real. So you can just lie about something else. Like, no, 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 Santa works together with Walmart, kiddo. Yes, indeed. But mom, why does it say made in China on Santa's toys? Well, Timmy, that's because Santa utilizes his... Oh, God. I remember back when I was a kid, you know, around the age when you start figuring out that Santa might not be real, you know, around the age of... 20 or something like that, uh, my neighborhood took turns with sending each other's dads over to each other's houses. Because normally dad would go away to buy the newspaper, and then Santa would show up. So me, as, as a six-year-old or something, was like, hold on, dad is not here, but Santa is. So I started figuring it out. But then they started swapping it out, so dad was there at the same time as Santa? What? Mind blown. It couldn't possibly be someone else. The only detail is that this neighboring dad who was parading as Santa Claus was uh, really drunk. Um, <laughs> he caused some real trouble, got thrown out, and then he waddled to the next neighborhood house, passed out in the driveway, they dragged him inside, and then they let him sleep it off on the couch. <laughs> Merry Christmas, y'all. <laughs> Was on my sister's apartment door. She doesn't even own a dog and is barely home. Hi, you are impending on my luxury experience. Walking ridiculously hard. <laughs> Pulling out your chairs, yet pudding. Oh, get padding. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Your dog wakes me up every morning at 5.30 a.m. If these issues don't get resolved, I will make an official complaint. Your neighbor underneath you. At least they have the honesty to tell them who is making the complaint, I suppose, but <laughs> it's funny to get annoyed by a dog that doesn't exist. Maybe the house is haunted. I would see that as bonus property value. Imagine all like the ghost episodes you can record there. <gasps> Phasmophobia IRL, here I come. Admin for the local news Facebook group in my city. Everyone ripped into him in the comments got kicked out of the group. He is very right-wing, thin-skinned, and substitutes his admin position for his personality. Online and offline too. Oh great, sounds like a treat. I bet he writes that he's an admin for a Facebook group on his Tinder profile as well. Yeah, yee! I have noticed the word hero is being used to describe feats that are far from heroic. Yesterday, a woman was described by many as a hero, an angle for jumping into a shallow pool and picking up a struggling child at Monana Pool. It was a nice thing to do, but it wasn't heroic. Please leave the term for those that actually deserve it. Just in case you don't know what hero means, a hero, heroine in feminine form, is a real person, a main fictional character who in the face of danger combats adversity through feats of inegudy courage or strength. This just feels like the kind of person who picks fights for no reason whatsoever. Why do you care? Someone did a good deed, you know? It's I think it's pretty fine. And it's also funny that they make the argument in the group when they're admin themselves. Nobody can argue against me because they shall be smothered. Anyone pranking their husband? <laughs> Needing ideas that are easy to clean and not 100% visual, as Hubs is legally 
blind. I already have Sarah wrap over his coffee maker. <laughs> oh, and I took his underwear out and replaced it with the baby diapers. Th- this is how you prank your partner? They they have an impairment and you prey on that? What? Okay, giving it the benefit of the doubt for a second. You know, it could be that this relationship is genuinely very pranky. You know, they give back and forth and they give and take and that kind of stuff. In which case, it would be fine, I suppose, if both people are fine with it and it's like a fun piece of banter. Uh, No matter what it's about, it's between the two of them. But out of context, it reads really, really bad. And I'm not certain that's the case. So um, maybe not the best thing to put on your Facebook now. Am I the butthole or is this relationship exhausting? Well, that's... That's the name of the group? Hold on. <laughs> this this is gonna be spicy. I think Karen forgets where Jesus was born, lol. So my child's school is having a Christmas concert tomorrow, private Catholic school, and they want all the kids dressing up in homemade biblical costumes. <laughs> I find it very offensive to have a bunch of white Catholic kids dressed in sheets and curtain robes and a pillowcase as hijabs. Am I the bot for throwing a fit about it? <laughs> also, she's not acting out any part, they are literally just singing. Also made my daughter robe but refusing to put hijab on her head. Yeah, um, um, uh, 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 Karens all over the USA don't know a single thing about the religion. No, they really don't. And they never will. They'll just push their own narrative like fools. Yeah, it feels like it's being used like that more and more in specifically Karen circles. Whatever can be used as an excuse to push your own kind of wacky opinions, the better. Oh, yes, indeed. When you own your own business and get tired of dealing with Karen clients, so you fire them as a customer unless they apologize. Oh, oh, yes, the euphoria. That is so nice. I must say, that is one of the best feelings about being like your own boss and that kind of stuff. You no longer have to deal with clients unless you really want to. Oh, you have a brand and representatives are being absolutely poopy Karens. You can just drop them. It's super nice. They're like, you have to accept this thing, super low ball offer because blah, 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 blah. And then they then they try to like manipulate you really hard and you're like, no. Two dots out of five. Over expectation. <laughs> I stated it will be my birthday stay while I book the hotel. Although I booked it to an agent, there might be a chance when my agent missed to communicate this. On the other hand, a hotel did check and made a copy of my passport with my birthday written. So regardless, I believe the hotel should have noted my birthday either from the agent or my passport. Hence, I thought there would be some sort of birthday surprise or hospitality for me on the hotel. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's nothing being arranged for my birthday until an hour before my birthday ends. <laughs> I called the reception and asked if there's anything for my birthday. They finally gave me two packs of snacks. Uh, well, I know it's not a guaranteed responsibility that the hotel must provide special services for a customer's birthday. It's just my bad that I Overexpected what a four to five star hotel would be, and overexpected what a so called, uh, I can't pronounce this, spirit in Japan. In the past, I stayed at Hotel Amigo in Brussels, Belgium, for my birthday. And Hotel Amigo gave me a free upgrade of the room, a birthday cake, and a handwritten message card. Funny thing that unlike this time when I booked Hotel Amigo, I didn't even tell them it was my birthday in advance. They noticed when they checked my passport during check-in and upgraded me right away. I still can't believe Hotel Amigo and the Prince Park Hotel Tokyo bought you on his five-star hotels on Google because the different hospitality is heaven and hell. <laughs> I guess Hotel Amigo set my bar too high and I also learned not to trust hotel star rating on Google LOL. So, so the whole experience was bad because you didn't get a free birthday cake? What are you, 10? I actually got a birthday cake for free once. It was amazing. It wasn't my birthday or anything. I just came into my room in a hotel when I was traveling somewhere. It was just like, here, Mr. Click, here is a cake. Happy birthday. And I'm like, oh, gee, it's 10 months away from my birthday, but <laughs> I'll take the free cake. <laughs> but it's that kind of thing that I don't think you would expect. It's, it's that kind of thing that's it's nice when it happens, but I think having the expectation of something that isn't explicitly stated in the service is is kind of odd. Like I said, nice bonus when it happens, and it's definitely a, like a nice check mark in the service, but when it doesn't happen, that shouldn't impede the entire experience. It feels like a bit... Uh, you're expecting hotel people to be mind readers, sort of. Well, I forgot to eat yesterday. I saw Jack in the Box. I have never ate there a day in my freaking life. I was like, holy poo, and when I saw the big sign of pictures on the food, normally hate looking at food, but it's timing. Holy hog heavens. I got a cookie and cream milkshake with a double cheeseburger. Well, da 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 I have been crying in the car. But nobody could could tell only me. My face still looked normal. I was fine. But then, there he was. This big man at the freaking window. He gave me pity. It's gonna be okay. What the frick did he say?
okay? He doesn't No, man, sure as hell don't know his butt, so why did he say that it's gonna be okay? I was a fan of freak, you stupid man, a jack in the box, you don't know me, you're not my blood, so go freak yourself. I, I don't know what the context here is at all, it just feels like, you know, lashing out very wildly. You know what you say about cornered beasts in the wild, like, you know, oh gee, if you're hunting wild boar, be careful, because they can be violent when cornered. This feels like the same thing, but just trying to console someone who's sitting in a car, sort of. I want to speak to the manager about my little demon offspring. Oh, yes, indeed, Karen. <laughs> Can we make, like, Karen movies in Lego stop motion? That, like, normalized? This is really nice. I think this is Duplo. Is this Duplo? I think it's Duplo. Man, the flashbacks. I had that when I was, like... Three. I just drove the subway on Center Street, got my butt out of the car and actually walk in order to tie up property like I always do. I was told to have a seat. This is six sandwiches and it's gonna take a while. <laughs> really? Sorry. No tip for you, missing emoji. I'm gonna go home and make my mother a ham and cheese sandwich, missing emoji. And then I'm gonna tip my 83-year-old mother and put the money in her change yard, missing emoji. I did tell the lady I just wanted one six-inch sub. She told me the order for pickup is first, <gasps> missing emoji. <laughs> if anyone needs a job subway on Center Street might be hiring. I wonder if they need a manager. So the implication and undertone here is that <laughs> you came into a restaurant, you have to wait in line because they're already preparing a booked order that came in before you, and you want to replace the management in the whole store and suggesting that, oh, oh I hope nobody gets fired after my complaint. That's, uh, that's a bit over the top, you know? I would say it's the opposite. If, if the personnel just let people cut in line one way or another and you were just stuck in the queue if someone cuts in line and being pushy enough, I would say that's bad management. You know, how this worked is perfectly normal. It's a line. Congratulations. You have won the Humbug Award. Because you choose to be a Grinch and not put up Christmas lights, you have disappointed all the children young and old in your community. LED lights are inexpensive to run and can be purchased even in second-hand stores for reasonable prices. They can last years. I am sure cost is not an issue, and it's more about being too busy with your devices than anything else. Do you remember when you were a child and saw the Christmas lights on your street? What happened? Next year, do better and bring a smile in those in need. But remember, you still have time. It only takes a little effort to make a big difference. Love strong and love long. Putting lights for other faiths counts too. Why not show your pride with colors? Happy holidays! And there's a little weird alien Christmas person, I suppose. I don't know what that was supposed to be. I, I think I think demanding other people to put up decorations for for your experience is odd. Um, it's nice when it happens. You know, it can look very pretty. At least where I come from in Sweden, it can be so incredibly dark and depressing in winter, and when Christmas comes around, you know, we have fluffy snow on the ground, Christmas lights hanging up, it's really beautiful, it really is a vibe, but uh, I think expecting it from individual people uh, is is kind of odd. You don't know if they're celebrating it, maybe they're even traveling over Christmas, so they don't want to put up a bunch of stuff that's just sitting there for no reason, so there are many reasons why you wouldn't want to do this, and micromanaging your neighbors is probably not the way to create Christmas spirits in the first place, just gonna put that out there. One star. <laughs> Terrible customer service. Learn some common courtesy and professionalism. We we weren't even open. <laughs> it's so bad customer service. They wouldn't even open the door. Don't they see that I'm the most valuable customer ever? I have seen this as a trend, though. It's like a trend with Karens. It's their version of internet trolling. They go around to business aides. They, like, think they won't like, and they just rate them one stars, but they've never actually been there. It, it's amazing. It's like the equivalent of internet trolls on Reddit or YouTube, but specifically for Karens. It's astounding. To the person who stopped the washer in the middle of my wash cycle and took my clothes out just to wash yours. Yep, you're a butthole. Unfortunately for you, so am I. You can find your wet clothes frozen outside in the snow. Any problems? Come see me in 301. <laughs> I also love that it's taped up with a little band-aid. <laughs> Talk about Christmas spirit in the apartment building. Plot twist. Note Rider lives in 211. 301 stole their parking spot. <laughs> I hope that's the case. You just put the neighbors that wronged you up against each other, and then you just watch the fireworks. <laughs> Fourth of July comes early this year. Space Karen Elon sucks. Oh my god, that's an amazing movie. Look at that. Man, have, have you been on Twitter lately? Don't go there, it's an absolute disaster. But the amount of things that has happened, I just made a short list when I was talking to some friends about it, and it's bonkers. Like, here's the thing, I hate Twitter, so I'm like 50-50, you know, it's bad for creators if it blows up, but also, 
I hate it, so I would, would be kind of happy if it blows up, but, but still, still. So it's like, they mess up the verification system, they mess up the two-way authentication, so you can't log in if you log out. I think they fixed that, though. They've gone back and forth on the verification stuff. They briefly made it against TOS to link to other social media platforms. It's like, oh, if you link to your Instagram, you'll get banned. I think they removed that, though, just a few hours afterwards, which was wild. And then there's the fr whole free speech debacle, like just going back and forth on banning accounts, letting accounts back in, did, 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 did. it's like, this rules for thee, but not for me. It's just such an absolute mess. It's pretty entertaining, though. Twitter, um, you're the little nuclear freaking disaster that I think is nice to watch uh, on an arm's long distance. Restaurant refuses service to Christian group citing staff dignity. A restaurant in Richmond last week cancelled the reservation for a private event being held by a conservative Christian organization, citing the group's opposition to same-sex marriage and abortion rights. We have always refused service to anyone for making our staff uncomfortable or unsafe, and this was the driving force behind our decision, read an Instagram post from Metzger Bar Than Butchery, a German-influenced restaurant in Union Hill neighborhood, whose kitchen is helmed by co-writer Brittany as a veteran of TV cooking shows including Top Chef and Chopped. Many of our staff are women and or members of the LGBTQ plus community. All our staff are people with rights who deserve dignity and a safe work environment. We respect our staff's established rights as humans and strive to create a work environment where they can do their jobs with dignity, comfort, and safety. I love this. It's like giving them a taste of their own medicine, playing their own game with their own rules. Oh, you don't want to serve gay people their wedding cake because of freedom of choice and blah blah. Well, two can play that game. It's a two-way street. Let's see how long it lasts when you get a taste of your own medicine. Oh, yes, indeed. I was Space Karen first, damn it! Dr. Karen James! <laughs> This is what Twitter is good for. Establishing dominance. You go, Space Karen. Heck yes. In Washington, D.C., a white woman repeatedly calls her Uber driver a N-word and a slave after he tells her to get out of his face. I employ you! I am your boss! Well, not really. You're an entitled client. That doesn't make you their boss at all. They can just refuse to take your money. You see, it's the same thing again. Taste of their own medicine. Oh my god. All of a sudden, I can also choose who to serve and who not to serve. <laughs> Isn't the world a beautiful place, Karen? Oh, yes, indeed. Musky Husky. Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate for a speech in Murka? What's going on here, Tim Cook? Damn. He should try being a YouTuber for a day and <laughs> every time something gets randomly demonetized, just cry free speech. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny to see. But honestly, though, I'm not sure if this is like uh, free speech. That's a weird argument. I think it's just advertising budgets and what you want the brand to be associated with. Uh, strange stretch. It's a very long stretch. Don't pull a muscle, please. This is Jason's mom. I have taken control of all his Facebook accounts and he will not be getting them back. In addition, I will also be deleting this account and reporting all of you to the Facebook authorities. <laughs> Facebook authorities? <laughs> it's like the cyber police. Nice. This is not the son I raised. I raised my son to be respectful and good Christian, not a garden gnome. Dungeon synth has ruined him, and he now refers to himself as true gnome Ouija gnome lord and a medieval gnome fornicator. You nerds did this to him, and I am putting an end to it. If he refuses to live a worthwhile life, then I will live his life for him. Goodbye, and I hope your parents are as disappointed in you as I am disappointed in my son. You will live your life for him. You know, if it, if it wasn't so overly controlling and weird and aggressive, I would kind of look forward to seeing this lady being the gnomey gnome gnome fornicator. That'd be kind of an interesting roleplay, but, but <laughs> that's so overly controlling. How old is this kid? Like 18? 20? I'm assuming. Oh, dear God, that's so bad. This is so bad. This is a great recipe for ending up alone as soon as people have the means to move away from you. Great. A real-life conversation between my wife and my stepmother. I had a school lunch program feed my kids. Don't your kids have trust funds? Hmm. <laughs> that, that is, that is kind of weird. Yeah, that is a little weird. The chef's mistake. The, the underpaid waiter! A screaming Karen. <laughs> Not talking to the manager makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> well, that is a horror movie if I've ever seen one. The Karening. Ooh, that will be a bestseller. Kids playing video games. Karens. Wouldn't that make you a serial killer? I, yes, indeed. You remember back in the day of all the violence acts throughout humanity, all inspired by video games. Did you know the Crusades were inspired by Minecraft? The more you know. Hashtag 
facts. Ashes of problem customers. Oh, yes, indeed. Here's a store that's just had enough, and it's just a nice little threat. And then someone comes in and be like, Oh my god, why are you threatening? It's like, <laughs> it's not a threat, it's a promise. Oh, look at that little Karen Woofer. <gasps> the only acceptable Karen. Apart from Space Karen. Space Karen was also cool. Can we have Space Dog Karen? That'd be the ultimate species. I am the manager of a Twitter. Oh my god. I must say, though, even, even though it's a complete disaster and it's like every day it seems something new is happening, it's the kind of decisions that you have for a split second in the morning, but then you implement it for real without running it past anyone else. Like, huh, this is an idea. Let's try it in practice before <laughs> running it by anyone. It's kind of wild, but it's also kind of entertaining. It's amazing for meme culture. Um, and and that's, that's a pretty valuable thing, I would say. Got my pie ready for today's festivities. Unvaccinated and ready to talk politics. Ooh, really setting the standard for a great family 4th of July, aren't we? Well, <laughs> it wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be a family event otherwise, would it? I have seen some weird family events in my days, but I think this one really takes the cake. <laughs> I got you the snicker. Oh, yes, indeed. I threw my coffee at an employee because the order was wrong and he then punched me. He's been sent to the hospital for burns, but now my family and I want to sue. How can we approach this? This is definitely bait. Cora moderation went straight down the crapper a few years ago. It would have passed as real if it was posted on Facebook. That is true. Yeah, it depends on the platform it's posted on. You know, Facebook, totally believable. Cora, 90% fake. Sit down, buckle up, and STFU. Stop asking other passengers to change their seats because you failed to plan ahead. I would say if it's like you don't have a special seat and you're by yourself and you know you happen to be in between, you know, the couple, perfectly fine to switch a seat over, whatever, doesn't matter. But if you're also traveling with someone that you're sitting behind and you're expected to like, no, I want to sit next to my teenage kids for the two hours here because we're totally not going to spend two weeks together when we arrive. Not anyone else's problem. Just plan ahead. It's it's really easy. And it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's an airplane. You're probably going to sleep the majority of the way anyway. At West Elm. <laughs> wow. As a regular customer, I am appalled by your customer service. I saw an item on your website last week priced at $1,499. I went to purchase it this week and it's now priced 2200 and pre-ported to be on sale? So I chatted with customer service online and sent them the timestamped photo of the item I'd taken last week showing them the $1,499 price. They said it was nothing they could do and have to pay $700 more for the same item because I waited a week. <laughs> I then called customer service and spoke with several people. After waiting half an hour speaking with a manager, Maria got on the line and she did nothing but repeat the same destiny. I then asked to speak with her supervisor and she said her leader doesn't take incoming calls. I asked to leave a message, was not allowed to do so. And I was also given name to contact information to reach out via email. Basically, they shared all the higher ups in the organization to mandate that price adjustments for any reason were not allowed. Alex, I see you're leaving the organization, but I guess not leaving for a good legacy. Hashtag customer service. Wait a second, let me get this straight. Your idea of customer service is to get people to sell you an item for a lower price than it's listed at. Like, literally, you, you saw an item on sale at some point, and then you're surprised they won't give you the sale when it's no longer on sale. <laughs> but it's no longer on sale! <laughs> the answer is in the initial statement. What? Can you imagine if this actually was the policy? If an item has been on sale at any point, that is, like, the permanent price? It would make having sales absolutely impossible unless an item is just going out of print. This is astounding. A great cashier did very well by me. Unfortunately, I went again during a store to use my 30% off and the darn store was closed. Now my 30% off is useless and I made the horrendous trip for that reason only. Could have killed myself getting there and there were zero people there. Thank you very much. I do love shopping. I enjoy playing the game. Leslie. It's frustrating when there are so many exceptions to use a coupon. I had an item, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there is a massive snowstorm. Places are shutting down, it's dangerous to drive, and you waited until last minute to cash a coupon and didn't even think to call ahead in case the place is closed, like most things would be in this kind of snowstorm. <laughs> there are so many ways this could have been avoided. Calling ahead, not cashing it last minute, or, you know, just not being entitled because you let the coupon expire during closing time. I, d I don't know, it's just <laughs> so weird to me. It's so weird. Headphones in use, not by choice, hate it. Management thought it was a brilliant idea to put a gym above an office. Headphones make my job very difficult. Impossible to fully drown out the Neanderthal <laughs> weight droppers and treadmill rhinos. 
<laughs> I apologize. I cannot hear you delivering or picking up an order. Until that nuisance of a gym is closed, I will continue to not be able to do my job efficiently. Big thanks to management for that. I mean, it's formulated in a less than compassionate manner, I suppose, but also... I think I would also be annoyed if I had rented an office space and it was a certain standard on the office space and then after I've already rented it and moved in, they all of a sudden did something super noisy the floor above that would interrupt day-to-day -day operations. I would be kind of annoyed too. So I'm not necessarily agreeing with the course of action or the formulation, that's kind of Karen-esque, but being annoyed by this kind of noise, I think, I think anyone would be, to be honest. It sounds atrocious. If that wasn't the standard already. Like, if you moved in under a gym and the gym was already there, then of course, blame yourself, the standard was already there. But if they moved in the gym afterwards, when your expectation of the place was different, that's kind of shady for management. Oh my god, it's Kitty with Kitty Pancake! <clears throat> Am I a joke to you, Karen? <laughs> Yes, you are. Why, oh why, was it necessary to pretend two popular shows at 12.30 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. today for a repeated news story of a helicopter crash and loss of two lives? Oh my god, you know that when a post is written in all caps on Facebook, it's gonna be mwah, just gold. For the loss of lives is noteworthy only what will happen with family and friends' losses. Now when the young and restless are bold and beautiful going to be shown of this day's episode. It's an apex of a storyline for both the broadcasting that would be appreciated. God bless the family and friends of those who lost their lives. Your station wasted a lot of airtime just hammering the same information for two hours now just wondering what the advertisers are going to feel about not having their ad shown toe. Ma'am, the station you are complaining to is whom the helicopter belonged to. I'm sure it interrupted your plans, but it has a larger impact on the new station itself. My condolences. Oh no, this is so tacky. You're complaining about a station showing loss of their own employees and their own helicopter because your show got interrupted? Just... If it's if it's that annoying, just get get you know a streaming service. Netflix is a thing. Like, damn. Oh my God, it's Twitter on fire and has little musky husky. Yeah, this this meme just <laughs> encapsulates it so well. <laughs> it's just implementing ideas on the fly as you wake up in the morning. That's really the vibe it gives me. It's really entertaining, but uh, I also feel so bad for some of my colleagues who rely on Twitter more than I do. <sighs> Let's see where this uh, little disaster takes us. Dear Blorb, you are the only store in this plaza with a check your bag sign. That is an insult to your customers. I could go on, just take it down. Oh, what's that at the bottom? Let's see. Woodland creatures feature prominently in fables and folklore around the world. I like how the Karen used like a pre-printed page with like some funny quirky fact at the bottom. That makes it a bit more lighthearted and nice, you know? Education above all. Little Curran in Little Cur, oh my god, the very nice. I uh, just realized that Sarah from Awkward Puppets is a Karen. Oh, look at that. It even has the look of it. That is beautiful. I like how recognizable it has become. <laughs> it's such a meme. One star. I would rate zero if I could. Jump scares made me spill my slushy twice. Natalie was so pathetic, horrible, ugly girl. A little girl like her should not be saying the B word. All this movie does is promote exorcisms. I'm a nun myself and I feel deeply disrespected. It puts a bad persona on nuns so and my child is now scared of me. She refused to get in the car because she thought, and I quote, taken by the devil to be bad. Family dinner will now consist of her screaming because she's terrified of her own mother. Otherwise, the plot lacked a lot of details and a story the line did not stay consistent. Very disappointed and disturbed by the writers, this unrealistic movie. My daughter's name is also Natalie, which makes it worse. What? Wait, wait a second. What movie did you take your child to see? Because this sounds, with how they're reacting, a very small child. Are you sure it was a good idea to show them this movie in the first place if it really is so horrible that it makes you, the adult, spill whatever drink you're holding on to? And it also sounds like the kind of thing where, ooh, here, here's like a movie that is portrayed a certain way with a certain storyline. If you don't like that and don't think it's your thing, you don't have to seek out things that you know you probably won't like and also expose your probably way too young children to it and explain it's the movie's fault. Just because you have a child doesn't mean the whole world has to adhere to that child. It's also up to you to make sure what kind of media that child consumes. So, kind of wacky overall, bad review, man. You should be able to review reviews, right? Oh, I leave a one star on this one star review. It was a bad one star review. <laughs> That would be so good! That would counter all of this! Facebook? Oh, we are in for a doozy. Well, as of right now at midnight tonight, my Facebook will be going from 290 friends to about 10 to 15 friends. Thank you to the 10 people that have wished me a happy birthday. You... you unfriend people based on if they 
wish you a happy birthday on Facebook. Like, if you have that many friends, you have to wish people a happy birthday every single day. And I'm gonna be honest, it ain't that deep, fam. I, I don't care if, like, an old high school friend I haven't met for 10 years wishes me a happy birthday on Facebook. Like, it does not matter. <sighs> so on one hand, I suppose, if, if that is the case, and they use Facebook the same way, the removals won't matter that much, but at the same time, what a dramatic public post to make. <laughs> Are you that salty about random people wishing you a happy birthday on Facebook? Whew. So here's just a random shelf and someone dumped a half drinking gooey slushy. Oh, it has Karen on it. Great. Well, <laughs> very in character. Nice. 2F Club Karen. You want to go with me? You want to go with me? I think it's kind of like a zoo. I think it's a zoo. Well, ladies, lasses, and lassos, that is it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it, you beautiful bean. Remember to check out the emotional support team, and especially after a video like this, I think we all need a little bit of emotional support in our lives. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you in the very next video. Take care.